Luminar was founded in 2012 by Austin Russell, who dropped out of Stanford to work on a startup full-time. Luminar develops light detection and ranging, or LiDAR, sensors. You can think of LiDAR as similar to radar, but it uses light instead of radio waves. The idea is to put LiDAR sensors on vehicles. The LiDAR allows vehicles to see its surroundings. The ultimate goal is for LiDAR to enable self-driving cars. Luminar went public in late 2020 by merging with a SPAC. This was at the peak of the SPAC mania. At the time, there was a lot of investor enthusiasm around autonomous vehicles. When it went public, Luminar had minuscule revenues, but they claimed to have numerous partnerships including partnerships with 7 out of the top 10 automakers. By February of 2021, Luminar's stock price reached $38, almost quadrupling from the initial SPAC price of $10. But after this peak, it's basically been a straight line down. In November of 2024, Luminar was obliged to conduct a 1 for 15 reverse stock split to keep its share price above $1. To date, Luminar's stock has declined by almost 99% since the closing of the SPAC. Many large automakers including Mercedes, Toyota, and Daimler began experimenting with Luminar's LiDAR systems. But even if the LiDAR works perfectly, there still exist massive software challenges associated with making a safe autonomous driving system. These partnerships have taken much longer than expected to enter production. In many cases, the projects appear to have been put on ice. To date, there is only one production car on the road that includes a Luminar LiDAR system. The Volvo EX90 electric SUV began deliveries in late 2024 and comes standard with Luminar LiDAR. The EX90 is not an autonomous vehicle. The LiDAR enables the vehicle's advanced driver assistance and safety features, including adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, and automatic emergency braking. Even before the launch of the EX90, Luminar generated about $15 million of revenue per quarter. Many of Luminar's partners paid the company for prototypes and research services, even if they were not yet buying LiDARs to put in production vehicles. Sales of the EX90 were underwhelming. After the EX90 began deliveries in the third quarter of 2024, Luminar's revenue barely increased. This indicates that they aren't selling very many LiDARs to Volvo. The minuscule revenue Luminar generates is not nearly enough to cover its corporate overhead. The company incurs operating losses of tens of millions of dollars per quarter. By 2024, Luminar's financial situation had become desperate. The company underwent multiple rounds of mass layoffs. At its peak in 2023, Luminar had 800 employees. Today, headcount has fallen to just 320. In May of 2025, Luminar announced the surprise resignation of founder and CEO Austin Russell. Russell resigned following a code of business conduct and ethics inquiry by the audit committee of the board of directors. Despite stepping down as CEO, Russell retained a seat on the company's board of directors. Luminar has not disclosed any details about this ethics inquiry, so we really have no idea what was going on behind the scenes. But it's never a good look for the CEO of any company to resign for ethics reasons. As of 2025, Luminar's situation is looking very bleak indeed. Commercialization of their LiDAR products has taken much longer than expected. They are only in one production vehicle, which has minuscule sales volumes. The company continues to incur massive operating losses despite laying off more than half of its employees, and their stock price has declined 98% since going public. In September of 2025, just a few months after resigning as Luminar CEO, Austin Russell founded a new company called Russell AI Labs. Russell didn't found this new venture alone. He has two other co-founders. Marcus Schaefer is a former chief technology officer of Mercedes-Benz. He stepped down as Mercedes CTO on the same day that Russell AI Labs was announced. The third co-founder is Murtaza Ahmed, who previously worked as a senior executive at the Japanese investment company SoftBank. We know very little about Russell AI Labs. It appears to be a venture capital firm that aims to invest in AI startups. They have a website, but it contains very little information. Pretty much the only information we have about the company is one press release. In the press release, they announced an inaugural partnership and $300 million stake in Agentic AI leader Emergence AI. This language is very nebulous. What is the partnership? They claim to now have a $300 million stake in Emergence AI. Is that an equity stake? Did they pay $300 million for this stake? If so, where did they get the $300 million from? If we look at the details, it gets even more confusing. Emergence AI was founded in 2024. To date, the company has raised $125 million of venture capital. Austin Russell will become the chairman of Emergence's board. Russell AI Labs' new $300 million stake reflects the scope of the partnership and the shared commitment to deliver value for enterprise clients. But we still don't know what this $300 million stake actually is. What percentage of emergence do they own? We don't know what this so-called partnership is either. Nothing in the press release refers to Emergence AI raising any money from Russell. Emergence AI is only one year old and has between 50 and 200 employees according to LinkedIn. 
They make software that uses AI to help companies sift through their internal data. It's completely unrelated to LiDAR or autonomous vehicles. In October of 2025, things got strange. Russell is the founder of Luminar. Over the years, his ownership stake has been significantly diluted, but he still owns 8.4% of Luminar's outstanding shares. On October 14, 2025, he sent a letter to Luminar's board of directors. The letter contained a non-binding proposal for Russell AI Labs to acquire 100% of Luminar's outstanding shares. This would be structured as a reverse merger. Russell AI Labs would take over Luminar's NASDAQ listing, and the combined entity would be called Luminar 2.0. The acquisition will be funded either by cash or by stock. Possibly, existing Luminar shareholders would receive shares in Luminar 2.0. Russell AI Labs may concurrently acquire a different, larger global automotive technology company and integrate such business into Luminar. We have no idea who this larger global automotive technology company is, nor how Russell intends to pay for it. Presumably, this will be an all-stock merger. Luminar currently has a market cap of $125 million. I don't think Russell has enough cash to acquire the company outright. So this is what he's proposing. Luminar, Russell AI Labs, and an unnamed global automotive technology company will all merge together. They will create Luminar 2.0, which will retain Luminar's NASDAQ listing. We have no idea what percentage ownership each of the three companies will receive in the combined entity. The only asset Russell AI Labs currently owns is a $300 million stake in Emergence AI. It's again important to stress that we have no idea what percentage of Emergence Russell AI Labs owns. We don't even know what their stake actually means. There are zero synergies between Emergence AI and Luminar. A merger makes no strategic sense. The only part of this merger that could have any strategic rationale is a merger between Luminar and the unnamed larger global automotive technology company. But why does Russell AI Labs need to be involved? Why can't Luminar and this global automotive technology company just merge on their own? None of this makes any sense. Another thing we need to keep in mind is that on the current trajectory, Luminar is likely headed towards bankruptcy. As of June 30th, the company had about $108 million of cash and marketable securities on its balance sheet, plus $430 million of debt. In the first half of 2025, Luminar burned $98 million. At the current rate of cash burn, Luminar is likely to run out of cash by the end of this year. As a condition for the merger, Luminar must restructure its debt burden to be less than $150 million, so the debt holders must agree to convert the majority of their debt into shares of Luminar 2.0. This seems very far-fetched. Luminar is probably going to go bankrupt in the near future, at which point the debt holders can take control of the company. Why would they bail out the current shareholders by restructuring the debt now? Overall, this proposed deal is bizarre and far-fetched. I think it is extremely unlikely that it will ever happen. And this is not the first time that Austin Russell has proposed an attention-grabbing acquisition. In April of 2023, while Austin Russell was still the CEO of Luminar, he announced that he would acquire the media company Forbes. Russell says that he has long been a fan of Forbes. Forbes previously featured Russell in their 30 under 30 list. Russell agreed to acquire an 82% stake in Forbes for approximately $650 million. Russell said he would not involve himself in the day-to-day -day operations of Forbes, but he would act as the visionary for the brand. Russell didn't have $650 million of cash. He instead led a consortium of investors to jointly fund the acquisition. Russell believed that he had the financing lined up, and Forbes agreed to the sale. One of the investors was an Indian media company called The Sun Group. The Sun Group agreed to invest $300 million into the acquisition. But when the acquisition was about to close, they just didn't wire the money. Another $200 million was supposed to come from a guy named Nikhil Sina. Sina is the CEO of a consulting company called One Valley. One Valley is a private company with between 50 and 200 employees according to LinkedIn. He's just the CEO, not the founder. He also failed to deliver on the investment he promised. I have no idea how this guy would even have $200 million. Unable to secure the funding, Austin Russell was not able to acquire Forbes. This whole saga had something of a farcical quality to it. Russell wanted to be the owner of Forbes and the visionary of the Forbes brand. Did he really believe that he had funding secured? After Russell announced the planned acquisition, many media outlets jumped the gun. They ran headlines saying he owned Forbes. Maybe this was the goal all along. The proposed acquisition of Luminar seems to have a similarly farcical quality. It generated some media headlines, but in my opinion, it's extremely unlikely to actually happen. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about Luminar and Austin Russell? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.